Hello everyone, my name is Zach. I am the Traveling Man and today I wanted to talk about something that I've never seen another cruise vlogger or YouTuber talk about before and it's a question that I get quite frequently. A lot of you have asked this question via social media. You've sent me a lot of messages about it. Um, well, it's a couple questions actually. The first is how do you cruise so much and the second is how much did this cruise cost? What are you paying to cruise? I wanted to be transparent with you about that and actually in this video I'm going to go over the past six cruises that I've taken and tell you how much, exactly how much, I paid for those and then break it down because uh, among those six cruises there are I think four different cruise lines. So I'll compare those and sort of tell you which I thought was the best value and you'll see in the numbers yourself. And I think this might be helpful for a number of reasons but mainly I want to show you today there's a lot of preconceived notions out there. There's a lot of cruise lines that folks expect to be a budget cruise line and there's cruise lines that folks think that's a luxury cruise line there's no way I could ever even afford to cruise on it. So I'm going to show you uh, some of these misconceptions and point them out to you as we compare and maybe it'll help you see that you know, you can afford to go on another cruise line or try different cruise lines. Maybe it's not as expensive as you think. So I'm going to start from the very beginning, the very first cruise that I took since cruising resumed in June of 2021. I'm going to start with that cruise and then I'm going to go in sequential order all six cruises that I've been on since cruising began. Now before we get into the list, I do want to say that because I am a solo cruiser, and if you're a solo cruiser, you already know this, but if you've ever wondered or pondered about maybe going on a cruise by yourself, solo cruisers often pay double for their cruise. So when you see these prices and you think, wow, that's a lot of money for one person, just keep in mind that typically you pay 200% of the cost of the cruise as a solo cruiser. Cruise prices have actually been quite low. They've been a lot lower than they were pre-pandemic and we're actually starting to see, I feel like the prices are just starting to catch back up. This is March 2022 when I'm filming this video. But I think we're starting to see those prices catch back up to what they were pre-pandemic. There have been a lot of deals. There have been a lot of discounts. There have been a lot of uh, reduced solo supplement. Solo supplement is basically the extra amount you're paying to go solo. So a lot of cruise lines reduce that solo supplement to make it more attractive to fill their ships. So I've taken advantage of these sales. So that's the quick answer to that question. Uh, how do you afford to cruise so often is because there've been a lot of great deals. Oh yeah, while I'm talking about solo rates, let me answer another question that I get quite frequently is how do you find solo deals? How do you know what cruises are offering a good deal for a solo rate? Well, I've mentioned this website before and I'll go ahead and say it again here and I'm not sponsored by them. I wish I was. If you guys are watching, sponsor me because I tell everyone about you. Cruiseplum.com, you can go to their website. Up at the top right, you're gonna see a banner that says solo, you click on it and it'll highlight all of the cruises which have some sort of reduction in the solo supplement. That's a good starting point to highlight some cruises that have a reduced solo supplement for you. So starting with my first cruise, and as I go down this list, uh, in addition to telling you the price of the cruise, I'll also tell you what was included with the cruise outside of what you normally get. And what I mean by that is uh, some cruise lines, such as Celebrity, they have their always included, which means that your tips or gratuities, uh, your drinks, your Wi-Fi, they're all included in the price of the cruise. Now this isn't normally the case when you're cruising with Carnival and Royal Caribbean, uh, MSC cruise lines like that, you normally don't get that. But I will tell you as I go down the list what perks were included in the cost of the cruise. So starting with my first cruise back on June 26, 2021, uh, with the Adventure of the Seas, Royal Caribbean. And the total price of this cruise was $2,284. That's the total amount of the cruise fare plus taxes and port fees. Now, as I mentioned, this didn't include tips. It didn't include Wi-Fi. Uh, it didn't include any drinks or any drink package or dinner package or anything like that. Now, this cruise I did take advantage very dumbly because I didn't quite understand. This is the first time I ever did Royal Up. I didn't quite understand what I was doing and I actually uh, ripped myself off a bit on some money because I paid $260 to royal up or to, to be upgraded to a spacious ocean view balcony uh, and that wasn't a good move because after the bid was accepted and I was on the hook at that point for $260 extra dollars paying Royal Caribbean I went on the website and noticed it was only like $60 to upgrade through royal so it was just I really messed myself up there and ended up paying more for that cruise than I should have. So with the Ocean View Balcony at $2,284 and the $260 extra dollars to upgrade to that spacious Ocean View, 
I ended up paying a total of $2,544 for their cruise on Adventure of the Seas. My second cruise was the inaugural sailing of the Carnival Mardi Gras back on July 31st of 2021. I was so excited about this cruise. I actually chased this inaugural sailing, I think for like two years. During the whole cruising shutdown, I, every time they changed the date of the inaugural sailing of the Mardi Gras, I called my uh, vacation planner and I rebooked that thing. And boy, did I pay for it. Uh, it's actually... I'll just go ahead and tell you up front, this is the most expensive cruise on my list. And I had a just a regular balcony. I didn't have any suite or anything like that. There wasn't anything special included, much like the Royal Cruise I just talked about. All of the Wi-Fi, all of the gratuities, everything I paid for above the price of the cruise I'm going to tell you about here. Now, I will mention this is the first cruise we're going to come to where I had onboard credit. And I'm only going to mention promotional onboard credit. And promotional onboard credit, I'll classify as being... Uh, some onboard credit they give you when you book the cruise. So like if you go on Carnival's website right now and they say the price is $3.99 for the cruise and it comes with $50 onboard credit, that's promotional onboard credit. Any onboard credit that you have through the cruise line that they gave you, maybe because of a, a canceled cruise, Carnival was giving I think $650 or $600, something like that when they were canceling cruises during the pandemic. That's not promotional onboard credit. I'm only counting the onboard credit that the cruise line essentially gave me as incentive to book the cruise in the first place. So I had $50 of onboard credit on this cruise and the grand total for that balcony, regular balcony on the Carnival Mardi Gras on deck 15, it was $2,982, so almost $3,000 to sell on the inaugural sailing of the Carnival Mardi Gras. And if we factor in the $50 of promotional onboard credit that Carnival gave me and take that out of the cost of the cruise, that actually drops the price to $2,932. So my next cruise was a seven day cruise on the Celebrity Apex, brand new ship, over in Greece. And for this cruise, I had the concierge class. The concierge class is a mini suite. Uh, they have a few different perks. Um, it's like an upgraded stateroom, basically. And I only paid 60 extra dollars. Usually it's hundreds of dollars difference to upgrade to concierge, but I got a really good deal. Only $60 difference between concierge class and just a normal stateroom. So I was happy about that. Now with Celebrity Cruises, they have their always included, which means you get the basic drink package, a basic Wi-Fi package, and all your tips and gratuities are included in the price of your cruise. Now I opted to upgrade to the Indulge package, which gave me a premium drink package, premium Wi-Fi package, and it also came with $450 of onboard credit. That was a pretty good deal. So with that Indulge package and the price of the cruise and everything, I ended up paying a grand total of $2,730. And if we take out that promotional Wi-Fi with the Indulge package, the total price of the cruise comes out to be $2,280. My next cruise was a three-night sailing on the MSC Divina, and I don't want to say too much about the cruise other than the price. Uh, Wi-Fi was included, standard balcony room, total price was $349. Next up, we have Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas on January 14th, 2022. And this was also a three-night sailing, leaving from Florida, going over to the Bahamas. And for this cruise, I booked a standard interior room for $323 total. Now, this did come with a $25 of promotional onboard credit. And then at the last minute, I did broil up to an Ocean View balcony for $140. This made the cruise a total of $463. And when you factor in that $25 of promotional onboard credit, the total price was $438. And finally, we have the Celebrity Edge. Uh, this was a seven-night sailing that I did back on January 30th of 2022. Now, this was a great deal. I can't wait to tell you about this. If you knew me personally, you'd know that I love to save money. I'm... Despite all the cruises and the traveling I do, that's the one area in my life where I do splurge. I like to be as thrifty as possible in my day-to-day -day life. So when I can really save money or really get a good deal on a cruise, that makes me feel better than just about anything. So listen at the price of this one. A seven-night sailing on the Celebrity Edge. Again, celebrities always included. So the tips were included, the standard beverage package, the standard Wi-Fi was included. And I also got, because I think they had some sort of sale, Black Friday sale last year, uh, that gave me $200 of onboard credit. So the stateroom that I ended up booking was the Deluxe Porthole View with Veranda, and I booked this for only $1,171. So cheap. I did opt to do the Move Up program. This is uh, sort of similar to Royal's 
Royal Up program. It's where you bid on your upgrade. And I only had to pay $520 total to be moved up to Aqua Class. Aqua Class being similar to Concierge Class, which I told you about uh, when I settled on the Apex, but Aqua Class has a few more uh, little specialty perks than the Concierge Class has. So $520 to move up and to upgrade into Aqua Class is an absolute steal. On top of that, like $1,171. Uh, price that I paid for the cruise. So all that together, the total price of the cruise having Aqua Class on the Celebrity Edge was only $1,691. Y'all, I can't tell you what a steal that was. That was such, I still can't believe I got that great of a deal on a Celebrity Cruise. We factor in that $200 of promotional onboard credit. That brings the total price of the cruise, the net price, $1,491. And I used some of that onboard credit to upgrade um, the internet package and the, the beverage package and things like that. Now that we have the total prices figured out for all the cruises, I'm now going to rank them from the lowest price to the greatest price. Now, these first couple of cruises on the list are three-day cruises, so of course they're cheaper. So when we're done with the total price, I'm actually going to go down and break it down by price per day, and we'll look at it like that too. So we break these down a couple of different ways to sort of see the value in these cruises. So in order of total price, here they are ranked. The MSC Davina Cruise comes in at the cheapest. Next is the Freedom of the Seas. Then my cruise on the Celebrity Edge. Then the Celebrity Apex. Followed by Royal Caribbean's Adventure of the Seas. And finally, the most expensive cruise on this list was the Carnival Mardi Gras. Are we shocked by any of this yet? Let me know down in the comments what you think so far. Uh, any of this ranking up like you thought it would. So now ranking these by price per day, they actually end up being in the same order. The MSC Davina was the cheapest, Carnival Mardi Gras was the most expensive when we break it down per day. The MSC Davina was actually $117 per day. The Freedom of the Seas was $155 per day. Next we have the Celebrity Edge coming in at $213 per day. Next is the Celebrity Apex at $326 per day, followed by Adventure of the Seas at $364 per day. Finally, Carnival Mardi Gras came in at a whopping $419 per day. So it was really cool and very interesting to me and quite enlightening for me to put all these numbers together and, and present them to you in this video because I learned a few things. First of all, I will say that the, the three-day cruises that I took, the MSC Davina and also the Freedom of the Seas, I did book those because they were such a great value. I think basically this was because of the time of year I went. I went on the Davina in November and I went on Freedom of the Seas in January. So these are the, you know, fewer people are cruising those times of the year. So I think you can find better deals those times of the year. However, I was surprised when I ranked it by day that those were still the cheapest. So I guess that just goes to show us that you can find really good deals on those shorter cruises. So be on the lookout for those. And you're not going to get to go to some of the more exotic places that you can on a longer itinerary. But if you're looking for pure value, uh, you are going to find some of the best value at sea when you take those shorter cruises. I was actually surprised that those came out ahead of the Celebrity Edge cruise because, like I said... I feel like I got such a great deal on that cruise, and I did get such a great deal on that cruise. Knowing that Celebrity is a luxury cruise line, and I ended up selling on the Celebrity Edge for just $213 per day. I mean, that's tremendous, y'all. And that was in a mini suite. You know, that was in the Aqua class where I had all those perks like the thermal suites and the spa, and I got to eat at Blue Restaurant. Oh, Blue Restaurant every night you know there was a lot of good perks that i had on that cruise and the coolest thing about it all was there was only like 720 people total on the cruise with me so what a great luxurious experience that was on the cheap the celebrity apex when i first booked that cruise and that was a greek cruise so i flew over to athens and boarded that cruise but i remember thinking wow this seems kind of cheap because all i had known prior to that this is sort of where i'm gonna make some comparisons here in terms of value. The fact that I could book a celebrity cruise for $2,730 for a seven day cruise on their brand new ship when I'd just gotten off the Carnival Mardi Gras and paid almost $3,000 for a standard balcony on there. I was like, this, this has to be wrong. You know, I thought Carnival was supposed to be the cheaper cruise line, right? I know I'm selling on their new ship, but I thought it was supposed to be such a great value when compared to a lot of the other cruise lines. Now I know when you compare Carnival and Royal, and a lot of folks have done this on the internet, so you can go out and, and research this a bit. 
But when you compare Carnival and Royal, especially over the past five to 10 years, they've kind of gotten quite even on the price of their cruises. Carnival isn't consistently the value cruise line anymore when compared with Royal Caribbean. Uh, I know back in 2013 when I started cruising, I was like, Carnival's gonna be the cheapest. So that stopped me from looking at any of the other cruise lines. I was just like, I sell Carnival because that's what I can afford. When I decided that I was gonna sell Celebrity and mainly because I knew they had a new cruise ship and it was selling in Greece. So these were both very attractive reasons for me to choose Celebrity, but I was really shocked that the tips were included and then all the drinks were included on board and the Wi-Fi was included. You really gotta look at the prices of some cruise because I'm not saying always, but you can find deals like this and you can go on Celebrity Cruises cheaper than you can Carnival, especially if you want to sell the Mardi Gras. I know that the prices of the Carnival Mardi Gras have been consistently high uh, compared to some of the rest of the Carnival fleet. So if you look for these deals and, and you know, you might be thinking I want to go on a new ship and I normally sell Carnival because they're the cheapest and I'm going to go on the Mardi Gras, look around a little bit. Look at Royal. Uh, look at Celebrity for sure. And just compare these things. It's not only at the end of the day the total price of the cruise, but think about some of these perks uh, that you're getting or some of the things that are included, I should say. Uh, in the price of the cruise. So if you're getting things like gratuities included and you're getting things like drinks included and Wi-Fi included, well, you can just consider that you're probably going to be paying 15 to $20 a day on Carnival for a Wi-Fi package. All those things add up. If you're into buying the drink package and you want to buy that, that's another $500 plus dollars uh, for a seven day cruise on Carnival per person. So I guess what I'm saying is, if you really wanna get a good value in a cruise, just do your research a bit. Look at the prices of cruise. Go to cruiseplum.com. It's not just for solo cruises. They also highlight all the cruise deals that are available. See if there's cruise deals available on some of the cruise lines you might wanna try other than the cruise line you currently are loyal to or sell with most frequently. Because if you wanna have the opportunity to try other cruise lines. I promise you it's out there for a good price, for a price that you can afford. So that's all. That's my total nerdy budget money presentation on the price of my cruises. I hope this has been helpful. I thought it would be helpful, again, because folks often ask me these questions. Let me know down in the comments if you found this helpful and what you thought about my comparison. Were you surprised about any of, uh, where some of these cruises ranked on this list? I wanna thank you so much for watching this video taking the time out of your day to uh, listen to what I had to say. I hope you found it informative. Please go down below if you enjoyed the video. Give me a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next adventure.